Okay, so by now some of you have probably watched the YouTube playlist videos that I posted and uh, in the beginning uh, the first video or, or two is uh, just kind of justifying Weka and, and how it works and uh, starting to, to show you how to install it and then later on in the videos uh, I think it's maybe the fourth or fifth they actually show you how to run a classifier. So remember from this course, this, this course is about data mining and machine learning. And so one of the things you do with data mining is uh, you take some data and you split it up into two parts. Uh, you have what's known as your training data and then you have your uh, test data. So with the training data you will uh, build a model of some sort and we'll get on to this later. I just wanted to explain the, the output of Weka because if you don't really understand what the output is, you, you're just kind of running a program and, and getting a bunch of garbage. So the output is uh, something known as a confusion matrix. And so you run a classifier and uh, you get that output and I wanted to explain exactly what that output is. So some of you may have taken a statistics class and this is actually kind of a, a, a holdover I guess you could say. It's, it's shared between data mining and machine learning and statistics. So if you've had statistics before this will probably make some sense. And so probably the easiest way to explain a confusion matrix is not even to use data mining or machine learning or Weka or any other, exam other example. Probably the easiest way to explain it is with a medical test. So an, an HIV test, and I apologize, I'm not that great with this tablet, so try to write slow here. Okay, so we have an HIV test, and you'd probably noticed in Weka the output was kind of in a in a matrix, uh, hence the name confusion matrix. And uh, I think the reason that they call it confusion matrix is because it can be confusing. But we'll be doing a two by two confusion matrix. But you saw in the videos that you can have larger. You can have three by three or four by four or five by five. Really, really any size. It's it's based on how many inputs you have. So give me a moment while I try to draw this legibly. Okay, so hopefully everybody can read that. Let me try to fix my T a little bit here. I think I'm actually just making it worse. Um, so uh, everybody is probably familiar with a medical test. Uh, you have uh, your condition that you're testing for and then whether the person actually has that condition. So HIV, te HIV test is a good example of that. So in your population that you're testing, you're going to have some people who actually have HIV. You're going to have some people who test for HIV. And then so uh, the test is good, but it's not perfect. So there's going to be some times where somebody tests uh, positive for HIV and they don't actually have it. And there's going to be times where they test negative for HIV and uh, they, they test the negative, but they do actually have it. So we'll discuss the ramifications of that as well. So TP on the upper left hand right there, let me see if I can write here. So TP stands for true positive and then right here right next to it uh, stands for false positive. Uh, underneath that is FN for false negative and then TN for true negative. So a true positive means that, and I should explain on the left hand side, so this is what they tested for and this is their actual. And so these rows and columns are actually the intersection. So in this case, they tested positive. They, they actually do have HIV, so that's a true positive. In this case, they uh, tested negative, and they actually are a negative, so that's a true negative. So those are fine. What, when we run into problems are, are false positives. So they tested positive, 
but they're actually negative. They test it negative, uh, but they actually do have it. So the ramifications are a little bit different depending on the situation, but typically the false positives are better to have. So in this case, uh, the, the person has a false positive and, and they'll probably be scared at, at first, and, uh, but then the doctor will order additional tests, better tests, maybe more invasive, more expensive, but then they'll realize uh, at some point that they're actually negative. And so that's fine. Uh, the issue is uh, the expense when we talk about classification is the false negatives right here. So what happens with the false negative, especially with a test like HIV, is so few people actually have HIV that when somebody tests negative, most likely they're going to assume that they're actually negative. And then so they can spread the disease and, and that causes other issues and uh, time they could be using to get treatment they're not because they, they didn't realize they have it. So one of the things that you can do is ass assign a cost with the, uh, the false negative case and that way you have more false positives because that's something you can do something about. When you have a false negative you didn't realize that you had a, uh, an actual positive so you, don't, you tend to not do anything. But when you have a false positive you run further tests and you do additional things and then you eventually can realize that it's a, a negative. But, but one of the things that happens is if you have too many false positives and no false negatives uh, then you run into the situation where you might as well just run all the expensive invasive tests on everybody every single time because uh, that's what you're essentially doing. So there's a balance and there's some costs and we'll, we'll discuss that more as we get into the course. But r right now, f uh, just understand what the confusi confusion matrix is, the difference between a uh, true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative, and, and understanding the difference between an actual case and a, and a test case. Uh, once we get into classifiers more, uh, and, and that'll be the, in, uh, the, book in, the section in your book, labeled algorithms. So we're kind of in, in the first few chapters where we're talking in input and output and just getting Weka set up. So, but I wanted you to at least understand the output that Weka gives you.